short and sweet to start the video. If you don't like that style of racing, I, I just don't watch. Like, I, I hate when people say that because I've, I've gotten told that all the time and it's a stupid argument, but th that is NASCAR. So, like, there, there isn't another form of it. That, that is it. That's stock car racing. There's, there's a genuine consent or ge general consensus. I don't know why it's a genuine. That's not even a word. General consensus of that is stock car racing. So if that's not what you like, and for some reason you want full throttle pack racing or something, go watch something else. There's IndyCar. There's European motorsports. There's Australian motorsports. There's whatever else motorsports. You can watch cycling. I watch cycling. Cycling's fun. You can watch that. That's a lot of pack racing. You know, and then some attacks. Um, you you can watch horse racing. You can watch go-karts you can go race a go-kart yourself you can go to disney world and do the 15 mile per hour go-karts with the you know you could bring your kid along with you you could go to your local grocery store and uh take a grocery cart and you know push it along and then hop in the little thing and like glide along and race your friends you could do any of that but if you want something changed now within nascar with that car and that package you know th there's nothing to change that's it. There you go. I want to give a shout out to all the Patreon members for always supporting the channel. You guys are the absolute best. I want to give a shout out to my, to my club, to my goddamn club, baby. Woo! We're in fourth, three games in hand on Manchester United, who are a trash fest of a club. I've seen it happen. We were like this the last few years. We were just like Manchester United. Uh, they are now. I've seen it. It's going to get worse. Don't worry for you guys. <laughs> it's all my United fans. Have fun on the journey. You're not at rock bottom yet. Trust me. Every time you think you're at rock bottom, you're not there yet. I can say that about NASCAR too. Every time I thought I was at rock bottom, 2015, 2017, 2018, 2019, just, and, then we, and then we went full throttle racing, 2019, 2020. It was like, where is rock bottom? You know, that you think you hit it like three to four times before you come back up. Arsenal are on the come up. All right. Every, there's a direction. There's young players, young manager, and everyone. We, we have a focused direction. Okay. You might be wondering why am I talking about Arsenal when this is a NASCAR post race review? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna come around. Okay, listen. So young players, direction, the culture's changing. We're all focused. Okay, what's going on with NASCAR? We got, well, can we say Steve Phelps is a young leader? Probably not. We have new leaders. There's a direction. There's a focus. There seems to be a change in culture. There seems to be like again, where everyone's going in one direction. The fans, the the uh, the sanctioning body, the drivers, the teams, one direction. And shout out One Direction, shout out Harry Styles. And they're on the come up. Arsenal's on the come up. NASCAR's on the come up. So my mood is on the come I'm in a good mood, baby. It's, it's been a beautiful month. I mean, come on. The last month has been fantastic. I mean, we haven't lost a game. NASCAR's had three amazing races. What do you want me to say? What, what do you mean to say? I could just end the review right there, honestly. Guys, it was a great race. Don't got to talk about anything else. Uh, if you go on Jeff Gluck's poll tomorrow, vote yes. There you go. That's it. Comment down below what you think. And it was fantastic. 10 out of 10. All right. No, seriously, if I was rating this race, if I was, if I had to rate this race, 10 out of 10, I'm not even kidding. I'm not, I've not seen a mile and a half race like that in a very long time. Uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, um, some of the finer details in the race, but let's talk about overall, um, what I saw with the car. Cause this was a very important race for me. I literally had to watch the whole thing on my phone because I was again I was never at my I'm never you know these 3:30 races I'm I'm not I'm busy all right I can't I, can't, I need to be back on the East Coast we got to race on the East Coast okay but I wanted to see how this car would handle uh, a few things I wanted to see dirty air I wanted to see um, essentially how close could another car get to uh, you know to someone in front of them and would they get aero tight aero loose most drivers on the radio were talking about actually aero loose so it was not aero tight it wasn't like you get into the wake of a driver and you just push right up the track it was more of an aero loose thing um but visually just from looking at it uh i could honestly say i think the dirty air effects have lessened by a, about 10 to 20 percent it's not a big change it's not like the you know when F1 comes out with their numbers and like this is gonna reduce dirty air by 35%. Uh, it's not like that. I don't think it's that major, but I, I do think the cars can definitely get closer. We saw Truex and Kyle Busch at the end of the race. They were basically separated by two tenths to a tenth the whole race. And yes, Truex wanted to get out of the line, but even when Truex was running right behind Kyle Busch, it wasn't like you visibly saw the car just shoot straight up the track. It wasn't like that. That's why I say like 
10 to 15 percent i think the the dirty air effects are better major thing i noticed was side drafting um so side drafting obviously we see it at daytona a lot and auto club we didn't really see it a lot because of, you know how bumpy that track is but i wanted to see the side drafting and uh it's less it's a good thing it's a lot more like the mid again I, I'll, you're gonna hear me say this a lot a lot of this is a lot like the mid 2000s um we've heard brad kozlowski say it we've heard uh, a few other drivers kind of say it who well if i don't who, what drivers were even racing back then maybe if we could get kevin harvick's uh opinion i guess but yeah it feels like mid 2000s the side draft just isn't as powerful which is a good thing and the reason is there's just not as much side force the the the, the down force on the car is now underneath the car which is why it's helping with the dirty air effects again not a lot there's still dirty air i don't want to like you know get your hopes up too much and say dirty air is non-existent it still exists it will still be a problem it's just not as big of a problem with gen 6 uh as, as it was with gen 6 side force is something very interesting because there are a lot of times where someone will try to pull we saw it at the very end of the race uh with larson and bowman where you know you try to pull someone back and if you had to put a percentage on it, I would say it's probably around 30 to 40% weaker. If you go watch a Gen 6 race and how hard the side draft was and like how much it would pull someone back and it was just a side draft fest through the whole corner and through the straights and it was just side draft, side draft, side draft. You could tell on, on this car, it's, it's about 30% less. It's not as powerful. You still need to use it, but it's not as powerful. And then again, with not a lot of side force, when you go into the corners, and Las Vegas is still a pretty high-speed track, but when you're going off-throttle a little bit, uh, it, it's tough. We saw this a lot a lot throughout the race where a car being below another car, it's it's stable, but, you know, it, it gets tough. Kyle Busch in the final lap into turn one when he went over the bumps, and William Byron was on his outside. You saw him just go right up the track because he was really struggling with the car on his outside and the bumps in turn one. All this, it, it's, it's not like racing air anymore. You're really racing against other drivers and the track mostly and then obviously you know air plays a part in it but it's not as prevalent as it was before um it's just really beautiful this this, this race along with auto club has really eased any fears that i have um about the racing and i was actually thinking to myself today i was like am i going to dislike a race this season i don't know if i will like I, the only opportunities i would say is probably like pocono texas michigan i guess but I think Texas might be entertaining because of the amount of wrecks. We had, again, double-digit cautions today. At, so double-digit cautions at Auto Club, double-digit cautions at Las Vegas. This just did not happen before in uh, of, you know the last few years. It just didn't. It just did not. So these are very hard cars to drive. Um, and you go to a track like Texas where it's basically one lane, I think it's going to be tough. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe maybe even Texas with all the cautions, it might be a pretty entertaining race to the point where I'm genuinely thinking to myself, guys, I don't know if I'm not going to enjoy a race. Like if I'm going to come here after a race and be like, that was awful. I don't know what situation that is going to come up. I, I can only think of a few situations. We go to Phoenix next week. That should be a really good race. Phoenix is a great racetrack. It's going to be the first kind of short track with this car, but I think the short tracks aren't going to change much. You're just going to be able to make more contact actually, um, with this car, which means, you know, the short tracks will be better because the, the issue we had at short tracks with this car was the flat tire issue. Um, you know, running into someone getting a flat tire, that's not really a thing anymore. So you should be able to see more contact, more entertaining racing, and everything else is basically going to be the same. It's not going to look different. It shouldn't really feel different. Um, it's still going to be kind of how NASCAR has been on short tracks the last few years and we've all loved short tracks the last few years so yeah like overall guys let me know in the comments do you think you're gonna see a race that you don't enjoy i don't i mean other than texas and maybe michigan um but i still think both those races could be pretty good so yeah let's just i'm just excited man let's talk about the race winner alex bowman did not think I would be saying that. And uh, Kyle Busch, I'm going to put the tweet up of what he said. I'm not going to repeat what he said, but here, here's the tweet of what he said. Uh, yeah, so he's obviously very frustrated. I kind like the Alex Bowman haters don't come after me. You know, Hendrick's my, 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 those are my boys. All right. Jeff Gordon, Hendrick Motorsports. That's my gang. All right. I root for Hendrick Motorsports. I'm happy. Hendrick, but you'd be lying to yourself if you didn't notice that Alex Bowman, when he does win races, yeah, he's fast, but like. Alex Bowman's this weird study where he won four races last season, but you knew he had really no shot at a championship. He wins today, and I just, 
you just know he doesn't have a chance at the champion. I don't know what it is about Alex Bowman. It's just like he will not run top five consistently and dominate races. And like he, he somehow wins multiple races. So I'm not going to say he won't win because he does. But I, 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 I don't really know how he does it so much. Do you, I mean, in this race, you know where to be seen. He's He's running pretty well the whole race, but... You don't expect him to win. You expect, you know, um, Chastain was running up towards the front. Kyle Busch trucks at the end. Caution comes out. Strategy. Okay, strategy comes up. And then, you know, it's anyone's race. And this is a NASCAR. Strategy. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not saying it deters the win. It's a win. It's a good win. Strategy wins are a part of it. And, and they don't mean anything less than if you dominated a race or something. And so I just want to make that very clear. It's just Alex Bowman has this weird way of winning races I can remember the race where Larson had a flat tire at Pocono, hit the wall, and Bowman won that race. So, like, he just has this weird way of winning races, but not being a favorite or a championship contender. So, like, I never give much attention to him. And I know he has a large, he has a pretty decently sized fan base because obviously he took over. Um, well, he, he mainly took over from like Dale Jr. And then he took over from Jimmy Johnson. So some of the fan bases of Jr. and Jimmy Johnson went over to Alex Bowman. So I get it. Um, but yeah, he just doesn't dominate. So he wins today. Cool. He'll probably win another two times this season somehow, but he just won't be a championship contender. And you know, that's just my opinion. I think that's the opinion of a lot of people. And I think just in, you know, Kyle Busch kind of said it. He backs his way into wins. Yeah, He kind of said it in a disrespectful kind of wrong way. But, you know, you know what he's saying. And he has a point. The last two laps was really entertaining. Kyle Larson and Bowman were going side by side. You know, it was kind of reason. It, it looked like a, you know, 550 horsepower package kind of thing. But as you guys know, you know, they're not going full throttle. Those guys are actually really struggling to stay side by side and try to race. And in the final corner, you see Larson lose the nose because he, he's trying to stay on the outside quarter panel of Bowman, get him loose to something. And then Larson just lost the nose. Um, obviously, if, there was, if, there, if that was the 550 horsepower package, they would just go side by side the whole way until the start finish line. It'd be a side draft fest. And, you know, whatever happens, happens with this. That, that was actually so it. it might not look totally different, but that was actual racing, having to lift into the corners, having to be very wary of getting, you know, is, you know, for Bowman, is Larson going to take the, the airway off my spoiler? What's going to happen? Am I going to get loose underneath him? Am I going to wreck us both? We don't want that to happen. So that was very intense, those last two laps. I wish Fox wouldn't go with the overhead camera. At least on my phone, Fox went with the overhead camera. Why? Like, it because you can't get a sense of speed. I think they went with the overhead camera, like, from the back stretch all the way through, they went with the overhead camera. Why? The uh, you, you like I said, you don't get a sense of speed. You're coming to the end of the race. Um, I don't agree. Fox's whole. I'm gonna keep this very short because I don't want to complain. Fox as a whole, guys. I don't know what's going on with them. Danica Patrick. I think it's all very clear. We know she's not gonna have a career in broadcasting because she just. She, it's not her fault. She just doesn't have the voice, the enthusiasm. She just doesn't. I mean, the amount of time she compared something to IndyCar today and to a football and to UFC. I, I, I don't know what she was talking about the whole race. Honestly, I was just, I, I was tired of it. That's not really the main thing. Fox's production is just, whether it's the commercials, which I, I get it, you know, commercials are commercials. You got to make money. I'm not, I'm not going to be a huge complain, complainer about that. My, my little complaint is like when this new TV deal comes in, there just has to be a method where fans can pay for commercial free or just more access um, cause like one thing I've noticed, I, I, guys, I pay for ESPN plus and I pay for Peacock and just being able to just stream from my phone, uh, Peacock. And by the way, look, look, there's, there's Skywalker on my phone, just being able to stream from Peacock or, uh, ESPN plus, I don't have any issues and like, it, it's great. And you know, they have ad free options and stuff. NASCAR can't do that cause of the TV deal, but I just hope in the ne next TV deal, they can do that. And then Fox is a production crew. I just don't know what's going on. When there's a fight for the lead, they go into a replay. When Kyle Busch and Truex are about to have their first battle for a lead, they then minimize that screen to the top left of the corner and show Kyle Busch's day for th two minutes for so while Truex and Busch are battling for the lead and Mike Joy is rambling on about for the fourth time or fifth time in the broadcast how Kyle Busch wrecked in practice and, and all that stuff. I just don't understand the logic or the method to their production team. Um, whoever's calling the shots, like, hey, let's go to this, let's go to that. 
It doesn't make sense. I don't get it. And Mike Joy is trying his best. He's the strongest in the pair in the booth to keep everything going. But it just doesn't feel right. And I think the most people can agree with that. It just something does, just doesn't feel right. Shout out to Ross Chastain. He had a great run. Um, the race the race results got a little bit skewed because of the strategy and all that stuff. But a lot of guys had good runs. It was a good race. 10 out of 10. I've been rambling on for almost 17 minutes now. So I'm going to I'm gonna cut it down there. I don't want to keep... I don't want to make race reviews too long. I don't want to sit here and ramble on for 20 minutes and waste you guys' time. You guys know my opinions on it. Let me know what you guys think about the race. I loved it. 10 out of 10. Vote yes on Jeff Gluck's poll tomorrow on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already. Um, and get yeah, guys. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below. And I'll see you guys next week. At this rate... Remember last season when I said I'm only making race reviews for races that I'm entertained by? Well, I've made three for three, which means I'm entertained by all of them. I might have to make 36 to 38 race reviews this year because I find all of them very entertaining. And when they're entertaining, I want to say something about it. So, yeah. Um, last year, I only made probably like 10 race reviews, and this year, we're making a lot more. Um, so, subscribe if you are new. Uh, comment down below. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the rest of your day. And come on, you gunners. We're finishing fourth. <laughs> See ya!